It's called the uh, ISIS Hunting Club, as you can see. And these are, these are the guys that are the hunters. Um, we never go to any fight expecting to lose. So we always feel like we have, you know, we are the hunters and the ones that are going to we be facing, they're going to be hunted. So that's the reason that we're very proud of this patch. The ISIS Hunting Club gaat op jacht. Het is tien uur in de avond als de elite troepen van de Koerdische counter-terrorism group vanaf hun basis vertrekken naar het front voor een operatie tegen islamitische staat. We have an operation uh, that's, that's going to be happening in the next few hours. It's something very strategic for us, so uh, we're going to try and cut off some lines and, uh, and try and do a bit of damage to ISIS uh, in, in some of their strongholds. Het konvooi houdt een tussenstop in Kirkuk, 30 kilometer voor het front. Hier pakken de commando's nog een paar uur rust voordat de aanval werkelijk begint. Er wordt wat gelummeld. Er wordt wat geslapen. De sfeer is ontspannen. Van enige angst of nervositeit is niets te merken. Drie uur in de nacht. Om zo onzichtbaar mogelijk te zijn, worden de remlichten van de auto's afgedekt met modder. De rit naar het front gaat door een gebied waar nog veel IS-sympathisanten zijn. In de verte zien we de oranje gloed van de olievelden die dit gebied zo strategisch maken. Zo worden onder dekking van de nacht de versterkingen aangevoerd. De operatie zal bij het aanbreken van de dag beginnen. De Special Forces van de Counter Terrorism Group, CTG, horen tot de best getrainde, best bewapende Koerdische troepen. Opgeleid en gefinancierd door de Amerikanen. Wij zijn de eerste die toestemming krijgen om te filmen op hun geheime basis bij de stad Sulaimania. De Special Forces Unit um, is uh, quite hidden away from, from, from the public eye, but um, I think in the last year and a half. The public have seen a lot of action and a lot of results that the CTG has done um, because of all the open field fights that we've been, you know, heading. And um, we really are like the tip of the spear. So whenever there's something happening, we go in there, we will cut through the ISIS lines and then the Peshmergas would come in after us. The counter-terrorism group falls under one of the Kurdish inlichtingendiensten. The director of that is full self-vertrouwen. Definitely in our areas, uh, they are afraid of the Kurds. When it comes to fighting the Kurds, they are very much afraid. Uh, they know it's not going to be easy, and uh, the wish that they joined ISIL for, which is dying, they will get that wish with us. And we will send them to the heaven that they think they are going to, definitely. The purpose of this training is for, for the guys to train every day, they do it daytime, nighttime, is to be able to get used to your teammates that you're with, and to be able to move around houses when, when you go into a house, which, you know, in, uh, in each room, these are like uh, real size uh, rooms in, in normal houses, you're going to end up coming across people very close to, to, that are going to shoot at you. It's how to deal with those situations and try and get everybody back out alive afterwards. Did your unit kill a lot of Daesh people? We have killed quite a few, I think, yeah. yeah. And what is quite a few? Uh, quite a few, I would say thousands probably. Yeah, in the last year and a half, yeah. Yeah, Thousands? A, uh, I would say, yeah, two, three thousand maybe in the last year and a half. What's it like to kill an ISIS guy? Uh, it feels really good because uh, you know he's not going to go and, you know, murder women and children and stuff. So for me, it's, uh, you know, very rewarding yeah. for everybody. Yeah? Yeah. It's like, yes. Of course, yeah. 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 Good at ad adrenaline. Yeah. You, can, you can't get a better buzz than that. So yeah, it's, uh, it's a good feeling. Leden van IS worden opgepakt door de Koerdische commando's. De directeur van de inlichtingendienst onderscheidt twee soorten strijders. Well, there's a difference between the local guy, the local Iraqi guy that joined ISIL because he had no other choice because there's no other way to to have an income. Um, so he joined ISIL. But there's a difference between the foreign fighters. The foreign fighters are here, most of them here to die, to experience this thing, especially the 
the Chechnyans, the um, South Asians. Um, th these guys are here to die. You know, they really believe in uh, the cause. They're the hardcore. They're the hardcore guys. But some of the locals are also hardcore, but majority of the locals are there to uh, earn some sort of income. Or there was nothing better to do, so they joined the ISIL. <laughs> yeah. Really? This is, um, this is the case. So like I said, there's a dif the, the difference between. But the, the danger is the longer ISIL controls these sort of territories, um, the more influential they will get. Huh? Don't forget, controlling land for them, they will be more influential. They are bringing up a young generation now from a very young age, training them, preparing them, brainwashing them. These guys will be dangerous, even if they're locals. They will be dangerous because they're getting this from the age of 10, 11, 12. Uh, they're, they're getting this brainwash. Uh, this is going to be dangerous. Those guys will be prepared to die again. So the quicker we can take away some of this ter territory, the better. De informatie uit de verhoren van IS-gevangenen wordt gedeeld met de buitenlandse inlichtingendiensten. Waaronder de Nederlandse. Dit is heel belangrijk, want er zijn wat Duitse foreign fighters onder de ranks van ISIL. En samen met een goede intelligence exchange. Uh, from the Dutch, Dutch intelligence service and from us being on the ground, we could start eliminating some of these uh, jihadis, the Dutch jihadis that are in the ranks of ISIL. What kind of information are you exchanging? Inf all kinds of information on threats against European countries, on information on personnel who are fighting in the ranks of ISIL. The information we gather from uh, from the front lines, uh, from the detainees. So we are. There's no limit. Of what kind of information we exchange together. Aan het front breekt de ochtend aan. Het is even na 7 uur als de aanval wordt ingezet. Je zou het een harde wake-up call kunnen noemen voor de strijders van IS. Ze worden op dit moment onder vuur genomen door de mortieren daar vandaan. De sluipschutters die daar zitten. De bedoeling van deze actie is niet om het dorpje. Een meter of 500 hier vandaan te heroveren, maar om een mentale tik uit te delen. Om aan de strijders van de S te laten weten dat ze op geen enkel moment nog veilig zijn. So inside the village of Wastani and Mojama Saddam, we've been watching them and they've been moving vehicles around, moving people around. And we have we have all the, the grids, the uh, grids. Uh, so we're dropping mortars on top of the buildings that they're going into because they have tunnels mm -hmm. that lead from one building to another. Uh -huh. And we're waiting for them to see if we get any reaction. Then we will be able to shoot with the snipers, as you can hear now. Okay. So and, that's what, and, and you plan to attack the village as well? Today? No, no, no. It's not going to be attacked now no? because in front of us, this field in front of us, it's all IEDs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you need to, we need to bring special vehicles, uh, EOD teams to be able to clear it up for us to attack. So this, like I told you before, this is not part of a attack, uh, you know, uh, situation. This is just, just something to mentally to try and to disturb them a bit. Okay. Good. Okay. Langzaam maar zeker verliest IS steeds meer terrein. Maar na anderhalf jaar oorlog raken het geld en de middelen van de Koerdische Peshmerga op. De Koerden zeggen dat ze dit zo niet volhouden. Er moet meer hulp van buiten komen. We haven't been able to pay our Peshmergas for the past five months, unfortunately. Uh, don't forget these Peshmergas have families to think about as well. You know, they're risking their life in the front lines. And a lot of people, a lot of delegations that come from Europe, uh, they say that we are fighting this, this war on behalf of the world. Um, I don't want this just to be words, to be honest with you. You know, in the past we've asked for weapons and ammunition. Uh, I'm asking for some non-lethal stuff as well. I think this is very easy for every country to do. Because you what, what do you need? Because this is what the Peshmergas need. They need boots, they need winter clothes, they need you know, all this uh, kind of stuff. Basic stuff. Basic stuff, and this is not too much to ask for. If we are fighting this war on behalf of the world, and we have gone into this war uh, without blinking an eye, you know, uh, we've decided to stand in front of these guys and fight this fight in, 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 on behalf of the world. Do you think Daesh can be defeated? Of course they can. We, we've seen them. When they first came in, um, they would attack a city with 50 guys and just everybody thought that they were like ghosts or, you know, 
something that dropped out of the sky. So p they petrified people. And they did that in the beginning from Syria when they started by their media, by, you know, doing beheadings, burning people, drowning people, you know. And that kind of put the fear of God into people. But now we realize and we showed people that these guys can be defeated. There are people with weapons. We have weapons as well. We're not fighting them with sticks. So yeah, and we've showed people that. And that is known now, that there's a, there's a, there's a, a nation, which is the Kurds, that will stand up and that will protect their wives and children and their families and protect their land. We've been living here for 10,000 years. Not many people know that. We're not going to give it up to Daesh. We didn't fall to Saddam. We didn't fall to anybody else that tried to take it. Daesh is not going to come and do anything different, believe me.